I hope you guys like the word iconic because I say it a lot. Hello everyone, my name is Bradley. I have a Brad taste in music and today we're going to be looking at the best album covers of all time. Last topic video I did, I believe it was the worst album covers and let me tell you right now, there were some absolute stinkers. I knew it could be bad, but I had no idea how bad it actually would get. Um, the album covers there gave me trauma. Actual trauma. Like, there was, there was some horrifying shit on there. If you haven't seen the video, it's fantastic. Uh, lots of ridiculous bullshit, but I have a feeling that this video is going to have less memes Okay, and it's going to be more serious as we're going to be looking at actual good covers. Now, you sent something in uh, in the community post and it got a bunch of upvotes. And there's a good chance that it actually shows up in this video. Without further ado, let's get into it. Oh, I'm really doing some time. What, what the fuck is this? Why is there a slide bar? I've never seen that before. What? Titanic Rising by Way's Blood, not only is the album stunning, but the music does feel like you're underwater, just like she is on the cover. It's just so floaty and peaceful, the guitar work in Andromeda particularly gives me that impression. I didn't click with this album at first, but I tried it again because the cover was so good and it all fell into place. Plus, not only is it beautiful, but it also is a real picture too, which you'll see what I mean when I show you it. The fact that it's a real picture that was taken is also incredibly impressive. Look at that. So they're underwater, they have this entire, like, tank underwater, bed, everything is, like, in place. I mean, this this is a beautiful freaking image, dude. And yeah, I agree, I feel like this image uh, gives a lot of credit to the actual art itself, as the music itself is freaking beautiful. This is an amazing example, a great thing to start with. Melodrama by Lord. Not only uh, does the painting itself look like a piece of art, but the colors perfectly encapsulate the sound of the album. Uh, the forlorn image perfectly captures the emotions explored on the record, and the uh, and overall is the perfect album cover. Yeah, this is a very pretty album. Um, the art is gorgeous, but I also agree the color feels very appropriate. It's an iconic piece that goes with an extremely like highly praised, well-aged album. It shows how much effort you could actually put into something, you know? Having someone kind of commission such a such a nice piece of art for it, 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 it does show, it does work. The Low End Theory by a Tribe Called Quest. It's a beautiful and simple painting with gorgeous colors. The nude model made out of red and green stripes perfectly fits the mostly black background. I think it matches the sound of the album with its minimal production and primitive instrumentation. He has another one that I feel like is a really nice piece of art. You know, it goes with emotions, like you said. It's kind of stripping things back to a very primal sound. Low End Theory, it's kind of nice that it's kind of uh, moving down here. You got Tribe Called Quest over here. The whole thing is really pretty. Um, it's a very iconic cover. I feel like all of their color, uh, covers, besides like their early ones, are um, really amazing. Yeah, this is uh, this is a great example. Get to Heaven by Everything Everything. This album is the whole package. The songs are fantastic, and the cover is way more than any worthy accomplishment. It perfectly reflects both the sound of the album and the lyrical content, despite the two often contradicting each other. The subject depicted on the cover is in as much distress as the anxious and angry lyrics, but the color palette of the image is just as vibrant as the sound of the album itself, and a perfect fit for one of the best art pop albums of all time. I could write a whole essay about this cover alone, but I'll just leave it at that. I really love this album cover. I, I feel like it's one of the big drawings for the album uh, in general, and one of the reasons I personally checked it out. I'm seeing a theme with a, with a lot of these covers so far. Yeah, this is this is an amazing one. Yeah, the colors are incredible. Like it, it's like you said, it shows a lot of distress, but there's still a lot of beauty, and I feel like this uh, album itself is very vibrant. Like it constantly feels like there's lots of flashing lights and, and huge colors, uh, a really beautiful colored palette in a way. And I feel like this is extremely reflective of that. Yeah, it's it's such a, it, like the figure is so cool. Like the color choice is amazing. The fact that it's all drippy and strange, it, it feels like such a nice piece of art for it. Punisher by Phoebe Bridgers. The cover is an important part of why I consider this album to be my favorite of all time. The harmony between the conflicting colors, red and blue, the mountains in the background, shaped like flames overtaking Phoebe without casting a shadow. It's so surreal, it encompasses the feeling of a catharsis over these tracks so perfectly. I couldn't imagine a more perfect cover for this album. Yeah, this is a very pretty cover. I feel like her last album um, was like pretty good with the ghosts and whatever, and it kind of made sense with the theme. But I feel like her being sort of isolated in here, you see the beautiful sky, uh, the mountains, the, the red just looks incredible here. The, the skeleton costume, okay, also makes a lot of sense with this project. Yeah, I think this is a fantastic cover. Someone's saying it's not that unique. It's, it, it actually is pretty unique. I, I think with the color scheme, it's actually really unique to Phoebe and what she's doing on this. 
um it's iconic i i feel like if you make an album cover that's iconic instantly recognizable um even just from the color palette then you've made it your own so i completely disagree with it not being unique <laughs> Dope Smoker by Sleep. This cover looks exactly what the album sounds like. It complements the slow lumbering feel of the album and truly feels like a pilgrimage uh, through the desert. Added on top of that, the scene of in the cover seems to depict the lyrics so well. Dope Smoker is amazing. I've, I've listened to this entire song, and yes, it's it's pretty much one song that's 52 minutes long. It's, uh, it's insane, and yeah, the cover is wonderful, and it fits it really well. I feel like it's a super appropriate cover. I'll, I'll show you guys a little bit of the song as well. I feel like this is one of those instances where if the music didn't sound as appropriate as it looks on the cover, then it wouldn't fit as well. As While it is a cool cover, I feel like it's made iconic by the fact that this song is, like you said, it's so dry, like a like a journey through the desert. Bring us your women. Up. The whole Plastic Beach album, for anyone unaware, they built models out of scrap metal and junk, explained in the documentary. Painted and placed in water works fantastic with the music. I didn't even know that. Wow. Okay, that's really cool. That's incredible. I thought this was just like, uh, like com you know, computer generated. I didn't know there was actually something uh, to this album. My God, look at this. You're telling me that was made from real models? That's bullshit. No way, dude. No way. It looks so good. Oh my God, that's insane. That is actually insane. Okay, I love that. And the album's so iconic for like the, the actual sound of it. It's such a brilliant album. And of course, you know, like the, the visuals are going to be, you know, top tier for gorillas, especially in this era. Um, I own this on vinyl. It also has some amazing visuals in the vinyl itself. Yeah, they always come through with top tier art. <laughs> Francis the Mute, the Mars Volta, probably one of Storm's uh, best album covers. Man made the iconic covers for Muse, Pink Floyd, Dream Theater, and Yes, Genesis. And the surreal nature leaves the album feel like anything could happen. Then you open the album and fall into the Latin wormhole of jazz and space prog. Even if you can't get into their style, you gotta admit at least the cover fucking slaps. Even better is it's a fucking photograph. All right. Um, this one, I'm... I mean, yeah, it's like a guy with a red mask over his head. I think that it's a cool album cover, but I do not think it's one of the best. I, I think that it might fit the music of, you know, the, the insanity of it and unpredictability of it, but I just don't think that it kind of matches up with the other ones. Eight plus seven, nine. This one's really good. I feel like it's iconic. I, I like it better than probably any of their other album covers. Like, I feel like Mars Volta album covers in general aren't like, um, like the greatest. But they have some interesting ones for sure. This is a really weird one. This is such a fucking weird one. The Egghead, right? Like they have some, they have some interesting ones, but I, I wouldn't put them in my personal top. So bad example. You should feel bad, okay? No. My pick would probably be Homogenic. Bjork has said that the album told the story of a warrior that fights with love, and the cover looks exactly like that description. At least for me, it's stunning, cold, strong. Scare, scary alien and iconic i mean alien is right this one is uh I, I love how weird this is like i agree this is probably one of my favorites it looks so strange it looks absurd it's uncanny um the fact that it looks like it's literally split down the middle um like a mirrored image too is really disturbing yeah i never thought that it was like a warrior that fights with love but i feel like the fact that there is something kind of inhuman about this makes it feel even cooler. You could argue that if it wasn't exactly like this, like if it was just a little bit more off, I would put it as probably one of the <laughs> worst album covers, but I feel like it just hits that perfect balance for me with all the things in the background, the hairdo, it's just so stylistic. It matches the album so well. Um, yeah, this is one that I proudly display on vinyl. I mean, here, let me play, let me play a song here. I don't know. I love it. I think it's amazing. Thirteen by Blur. It's just an incredibly simple painting of a sad man standing. Simplicity makes it look incredibly intriguing, and it fits a lot of the songs on the album perfectly. I had no idea what the hell this even was for a long time. Um, like looking at this, I didn't even know that this was a man on the cover. 
I, I do like this one, though. I, I feel like it is very fitting for the music. Yeah, it's simple. It, it is. It's like a nice piece of artwork. I, I'd say, like, out of all their album covers, this one's probably my favorite, so I don't, I don't completely, um, I don't completely disagree. Absolution by Muse. The album cover perfectly reflects the theological and apocalyptic themes, themes of the album along with its title. The shadows of floating bodies represent the symbols of the cross and the rapture of Christian ideology uh, contribute to a sense of forebodying uh, punctuated by the lone male standing up by the source of the shadow. It also helps that it's one of the strongest alt slash prog rock albums of the 2000s. This, album, this cover is garbage, dude. I'm sorry, but that font looks terrible. It it clashes so ugly against the shadows and, like, the actual background. It's such a mess. I hate this album cover. I, see, that's the thing is Muse, Muse kind of mid, right? You know, I feel like you can have a good idea, but just bad execution. And I feel like just the color clashing here is really ugly. Uh, take your soul. Eh, I'm feeling like taking your soul. All right. Goodbye. You've made the wrong decision. See you. So apparently on the uh, on the CD or, or on the CD version of this album it doesn't have the uh, the lettering but I'm gonna be honest with you it doesn't look much better I don't like it I just don't like it maybe it's because Muse is car commercial garbage okay you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Rage Against the Machines, self-titled, hard to understate the rebellious nature of this album uh, with the art of a monk setting himself on fire and just letting it happen. The art is not only metal as fuck, it helps the album out with getting its message of fuck the system across, one of my all-time favorites, and one of the three vinyl sleeves I have framed above my setup. I have this album on vinyl too. I actually ran across this picture on accident and I had no idea what it actually was until I was in uh, college and I was taking a therapy class, and this image came up, and they were, I, oh, fuck, I don't even remember what you described it as, but it was exactly like you said, a monk set himself on fire, it was supposed to be a, a message of some sort, and I, and I pointed out, it's like, hey, that's, that's the Rage Against the Machine album cover, and it was like, oh, I was like, yeah, yeah, that's the album cover for Rage Against the Machine, and I agree, it's very reflective of the music, it's disgusting, dude, it's so, it's vile, it's loud, it's a it's a hell of a message, dude. It, and you, like a, like you said, it's metal as fuck. There's just something about this that feels, you know, it, it's self-destructive as a motherfucker. I mean, come on, you see this shit? It scared you when you were young? I've never actually understood what I was looking at until like years later. So I'm so used to seeing this picture, it doesn't even do anything for me. I thought it was water. I thought the guy was like getting hit by uh, by a tsunami. Now, now, I mean, I know what it is now, but still. <laughs> Could see ghosts. This album art has always stood out especially beautiful to me, even though I'm honestly not sure if I could pin down a single reason why. Its use of color is vibrant and pleasing to look at. The artwork of ghosts in the background and the art style itself is very nice. I've just always loved this album's cover, regardless of the music, which of course thankfully is amazing as well. Good thing uh, it lives up. Yes, this is a very good album cover. I, I loved it when it first came out, and, and I do feel like it's extremely reflective of the music. Yeah, the color scheme is beautiful. The pink, the blue, like these these pastel colors just are so nice. They feel otherworldly. The tree in the background is gorgeous. The ghostly figure just oh, it works so well with it. It's such a creative album cover. I, I If I don't have this on vinyl, I really want it on vinyl. Which one is Kid Cutting and which is Kanye? I think I think they're both branches of the tree, actually. I think that's that's the deep meaning here. Sunbather by Def Haven. It somehow is the perfect combination of minimalistic elements that perfectly encapsulates the feeling one gets from listening to both the sound and the lyrics. The font, originally by the way made for this album, and the coloring with yellowish shade coming through makes you feel like you're looking straight at summer into the sun. Or at a curtain with the sun shining through, it's an overwhelming type of warmth, just like the music, it makes you feel good, but it also forces you to close your eyes and soak it all up. How can you look at an album cover and close your eyes? <laughs> stupid now as simple as this album cover is i actually agree with this one because i've actually heard the music and i feel like without actually hearing the music you can look at this and just be like oh it's just a bunch of letters on a pink background um but i actually feel like if we're talking about just like cover art that that just reflects this sort of ethereal experience and overwhelming uh feeling of listening to this project this is actually very reflective
like for for an album that looks so subtle like this for it to be a black metal album like it is with such a sunburnt feeling and uh, a feeling of euphoria attached to it is subversive um and i think that's one of the things that makes this album cover so amazing i'd give it an eight plus so i feel like once you actually hear what the music sounds like to hear that and to see such a minimalistic album cover um yeah i think that works extremely well and i feel like some other people can agree that after at least hearing the music like it makes a lot more sense Yeah, I feel like even without actually listening to the music, this is a beautiful piece of art. I, I love the style of it. I love how um, the pen is just so vibrant and it ex expansive in some sort of way. The, the letters of Arcade Fire down at the end aren't the best. They don't look great, but I like the uh, like the wood here. The hand looks kind of funky, and I, I don't know. I just feel like it's so iconic. It's, it's very pretty, and I do think that it works um, very well with the sound of the music as well here. Like, even that little spot it feels like it reflects the sound nice enough to say, yeah, 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 be Okay. <laughs> the new Abnormal by The Strokes is one of my favorite album covers. I think it works well with the music on the album, and there's so much detail put into the cover itself. Yeah, I loved this one when I first saw it, and I feel like over time it's just become uh, more exciting. Like, it kind of just looks like street art in a way with just so many beautiful colors, and like you said, a ton of details. Yeah, it's super abstract, really interesting, love the color great example. Is it cheating if you just buy someone else's work and use it as your cover? No. If it works, it works. <laughs> Unknown Pleasures by Joy Division. Look, there's a reason why everyone has this shirt, right? It's a really freaking awesome little image. It was designed by Peter Saville uh, based on radio images. Emitted by a Pulse star, the fact that its starkness created exactly the right impression of the record and that said record may be the single greatest album ever recorded is just a bonus at this point. I didn't actually know that about this. I love how I look it up and the first thing that comes up is a t-shirt. That that says a lot, I feel like. Yeah, I love this. Uh, it's, it's abstract, but it also feels like it resonates on some sort of weird human level. It feels like it connects with the dark feeling of this album. It feels like at this point, the, the album cover just matches so well with the album, it's hard to even say anything about it. Like, it's grown along with the album. You know, it's, it's hard to comment on things like this that have just become so uh, incredibly iconic. I really like this. I think it matches very well. And you can say, oh, it's overrated in the same way that it's like, oh, because people wear Nirvana tees, Nirvana is all of a sudden overrated. Cosmogramma, Flying Lotus, perfectly encapsulates what the album sounds like. It's got huge spacey feel on it, and the more you look at it, the more entranced you are by it. This is a really nice one. It's creative. It looks like a sketch. I love the circle in the middle. It's mathematical. It feels other otherworldly, like, uh, like an outside planet sort of thing. Um, it's a trippy cover. It looks almost like if you're in Blender and you go inside of a of a cylinder, right? If you really look at it. I personally like You're Dead a little bit better just because it's more like detail oriented and it's less abstract. I'll show you guys You're Dead. Um, it's, it's the one I actually have on vinyl. It just takes it to the next level, you know? Like, how, how do you even start describing this album cover? This is my personal pick, but, you know, I could, I could see. I, I still think Cosmogram is amazing. You know the West Coast. Mad Villainy. It really has a mysterious and dark cover, but yet it's one of the best hip-hop records. I think it fits perfectly with the flow of the album, almost as much as the image of a villain uh, who plans his misdeeds and those represented in the lyrics. The question we have to ask with Mad Villainy is, if nobody knew what this album was and nobody cared about this album, would this be a great album cover? Yeah, I think it would. I think the metal mask in general just adds a level of mysteriousness, like you said, um, I like the, the orange square there, I like the shadowy figure here. Um, the, the whole thing does feel like a, a very mysterious and yet inviting experience that feels very reflective of the sound of the album. Um, yeah, this is a good example. And, and I feel like the fact that it's aged so well with time too is, uh, is really nice. Hot take, but as a writer, most Imagine Dragons album covers get my creative juices flowing. I'm especially fond of Night Visions. The pillars of the night sky really give a sense of grandness to it, and the mystery of what the pillars are really adds to the desire just to write about it. Although Hell and Silence EP is my favorite project from them, Night Visions is my favorite album cover from them. Just a young gun on some pillars that look all 3D generated by Blender. 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 I hate this cover. I think it looks like garbage. I completely disagree. This this looks terrible. It looks like the fakest bullshit that's ever existed, which reminds me of Imagine Dragons. 
Uh, yeah, the fact that the covers don't even look like real rocks, the fact that this entire environment looks fake, the sky looks fake as shit, how does he get up there exactly? Well, they wouldn't think that through because all they think that you need uh, for even just the music is to make it feel large. They don't need practicality, and I feel like it's actually very reflective of the music in general. Um, yeah, I, I completely disagree. I actually feel like they have better album covers than Night Visions. <laughs> System of a Down self-titled uh, is an album cover I adore. It's sinister. The filter used on the hand makes it almost look like it's hand-drawn. I love the two versions of it, red hand and normal hand, and it's ominous enough to match the dark moments of the album, soil, mind, etc., but also without overselling the idea. System of a Down has never been excellent album covers, in my opinion. Toxicity's cover is just very lame, in my opinion. L take, by the way. Like, I love this album cover. I mean, sure, it's replacing the, um, you know, the, the California thing with System of a Down, but I love the, the low resolution way that it does it to make it look real um i i just think that it, it just fe ah, i can't say anything negative about this i literally love everything about this cover it looks so good on vinyl too oh my god oh i mean hollywood yeah 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 they they take the california sign you know the, the california sign right yeah yeah this is a pretty good one the black hand that's just kind of reaching out to grab you is it's nice it, it looks horrific like like it's coming out of the sand and I feel like it actually very well matches the sound of the album, which I'll play a song for you here, if anyone hasn't actually heard it. And the red version, too, looks really cool. Yeah, the album's also super stripped back, so I, I appreciate the fact that it is kind of a simple cover, um, but it still gets the point across. Uh, if I had one criticism, I'd say that I, I wish it had a little bit more shadow to the hand so that it felt actually like it was a little bit more ominous and popping out, as it does sort of feel like a copy and paste PNG, at least at this resolution. <laughs> Boards of Canada's uh, Geogati. It perfectly describes the psychedelic ritualistic sound the album has and the kaleidoscopic visuals that are also just really pleasing to the eyes. A pretty cool one. I don't like this one as much just visually as I do with um, Music Has a Right to Children. And that might just be a little bit of bias because I actually feel like the blue of that album just matches the coldness of it so much more. And my, I, I've only heard a couple of tracks from this album, so it also might just be a bit of bias in that case. But I, I don't know. I like the ominous uh, look and feeling of um, Music Has a Right to Children. But I'll let you guys decide which is better. Yeah, I personally prefer this one. It's just like the image is so downscaled that it, it just looks so ominous. I like the braille at the very top as well. Um, I feel like the font here just mixes very well into this, even though it's just sort of a picture, like the fact that it's faceless, you know, like the people are faceless too. Like this is nice. It's, you know, like you said, it's kaleidoscopic. And it does actually seem kind of reflective of the music. All right, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. All right, I like it. All right. One of my absolute favorites is Realign by Red Vox. The cover itself was first an AI-generated image that he mentioned would look cool as an album cover. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, that's a good one. Oh. Oh. I don't blame him for wanting to use that. Damn. Wow. <laughs> wow, that's good. That's really good. <laughs> good job, AI, dude. Damn. That's got everything. Holy shit. Wow, yeah, that's one of the best. I'd give it like a nine. Oh my god, the, the resolution, the abstract figure, just the, the, the architect texture in the back. I could look at this for hours, dude. All right, well, maybe it's worth checking out the album if, if they got their, their hands on that level of technology, okay? And it's only got an average score of 74. It's not good. It's not good music. It's unfortunate. <laughs> That's the dynamic shroud. I'll try living like this. Uh, such a perfect image to represent such an emotionally and uh, sonically disturbing album. There's something deeply uncanny about the distorted female face staring at you and smiling at the midst of all the colors and lights. Like some sort of a lost memory, a forgotten face trying to be recalled is a perfect expression on how the album feels. I think I know what you're talking about, and I think I agree. Yeah, this one instantaneously, uh, when I first was sent this in, uh, grabbed at me as a really interesting picture. Yeah, I love this one. Look at this. This is amazing. Yeah, it does. It looks like a, like a, like a figure that's 
almost like a reflection on the CD. Like if you turn the CD a certain way, like this face would show up. Oh, I love that so much. It's such a beautiful piece of art. Yeah, this also I'd give like a nine. This is one of my favorites. I mean, it's just so shocking. The eye with the with the light coming through it. It's it's hard to put your finger on, but it does look like just a warped image that if you just tilt something the right way in some sort of drug infused nightmare, this would come out of it. Um, yeah, incredible. Really incredible one. Infest the Rat's Nest by King Gizzard really does uh, fit the sound and the feeling of the entire album. Whenever I listen to the album, it always feels like I'm fighting through hordes of enemies to reach the statue on the cover. It's so good. Wow, I actually love this. I exactly how you described it, it does feel like a a some sort of like tr like trophy or reward or some sort of artifact that you're trying to get to. The barbecue grill, as they say. You <laughs> get what I'm saying? Barbecue grill? Because look, it's it's... It's the teeth and the and the and the smoke. It's the barbecue grill. I'm telling you, man, that's what every rapper is going for right there. Okay, yeah. So it's it is like a doom metal record too. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll play a little bit of it. Thrash metal. Okay. Yeah, this is one of those album covers that actually feels like it's rewarding to sit through an album because of it. I think this is an amazing cover. It's minimal, but it's just it's the prize, like you said, like you're fighting for a statue. Um, incredible example. Well, uh, another one that's just really amazing. Now, I haven't listened to this album. So, I have no idea what it actually sounds like. I'll, I'll give it a listen. But I gotta say, it's instantly intriguing. Maybe not my favorite that I've seen. But, if it's reflective of the sound, then it's pretty solid. Let's, uh, let's give it a shot. I feel like I've heard this song. Oh, I have, yeah, yeah. It's a nice album cover. I, I do feel like it reflects the uh, the sound of the album, but I wouldn't say that it's like, I don't think it's the best the uh, the band could have done. It seems it's fine. The downward spiral perfectly reflects the mood and the tone of the album. It evokes a sense of decay, disgust, desperation, filth, rust, and grime. I could easily see it being a wall in Mr. Self-Destruct's house. It's so off-putting, but perfect. Yeah, this one's uh, very disgusting. I mean, sure, the deluxe edition probably is not usually a part of it, um, but yeah, the wall looks gross, it's grotesque, the the stain here, not even the 9-inch nails looks fine. Um, I feel like the fact that it is also just color and figures and, and, and it's hard to put a finger on feels very reflective of the album. I like it a lot. I, I, I like the fact that it's not just super direct. My least favorite album covers are the ones that are just like, you know, the ones that look like those cheap books that you used to see in like scholastic book fairs that would just be like a, a, a picture of a, a scene of like the most exciting scene in the book that kind of spoils the whole thing, right? or tries to make you visualize everything, um, but, like, not trust the viewer to do it themselves. I feel like shit like this is really nice because it kind of gives you still a bunch of wiggle room to, to interpret uh, in your own mind. Master of Puppets by Metallica. It manages to capture so many themes of the album, manipulation, abuse, power, military service, and religion, without looking crowded at all. The image is striking, and the color palette of dark reds and orange makes it look brutal as hell. A classic. Now, even though I think this album cover looks a little ridiculous with these, uh, you know, graves looking like sugar cubes on the front, I can't help but agree that this is an extremely iconic album cover, and I love the hands pulling out. I didn't, I've never even seen that. The Metallica logo looks amazing. Master of Puppets, too, at the bottom. Uh, oddly enough, the font choice looks fine. Even though it's a little bit messy, I just feel like there's something so iconic about this. And what's also interesting about this video is I feel like when albums reach some sort of level of iconic status, uh, some of the things that look like little bits and uh, little weird quirks all of a sudden become part of the experience. I think the color palette of this is truly amazing. Like, it's almost just a masterful touch in terms of the actual color palette, even though the crosses do look a little bit weird. From the Nurture by Porter Robinson. This album cover perfectly fits the... F God, why does the scroll bar exist? Perfectly fits the feeling this album evokes. The album's all about Porter's healing and trying to find inspiration and love for music again. It's an album that's very motivating and upbeat and has such a positive listening experience. The man is literally laying on a bed of flowers and honestly, it feels like I'm doing the same thing while I listen to the songs of Nurture. It's electronic music that's made to feel more human slash emotional. So having an organic element in the album cover really makes the idea come alive. I completely agree with this. I love this album cover. The album cover kind of looks like, um, you know, you know how I used to be in a gang, right? And I used to specifically aim at children, right, during drive-bys. 
it's I used to see this a lot, except for it wasn't flowers. It was more like concrete, okay? But, you know, same thing. Anyways, I think this album cover is beautiful. Uh, yeah, the, the flowers, everything's so vibrant, so lively. It's wonderful. All right. Hey, what? Don't hate on my lifestyle, okay? It is what it is. One of Chicks Point Never's Replica is one of the greatest album covers of all time. The image of a guy seeing the skeleton in his reflection is striking and disturbing. The art style is beautiful and the drawing itself tells you exactly what you're going to get into. This is one of, uh, this is on top of a classic album too. I love this album uh, and I do love this art a lot. I feel like it is super reflective of it. Yeah, this is super simple, but just a gorgeous one, really. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that looks amazing up close. Like, I love the texture of everything too. Like, everything's drawn out with patterns. Uh, like, even the spaghetti-looking pattern on the skull is something I never really noticed. Um, but I love the, the little, you know, the grid-looking pattern, too. Yeah, it's an amazing album. Go check this out. Uh, yeah, a great listen. Holes live through this. The cover embodies the sound throughout the record, and each song has its own little backstory outside of the music. The cover and title also, unfortunately, reflects when it came out uh, beside, or because Kurt had been found dead about a week before its release. Overall, the cover screams perseverance over the pain. I will say that it's interesting because I do a lot of these lists, and sometimes I have, like, worst songs and best songs and stuff, like, overlapping. I haven't seen any actual, like, um... Wow, this... I haven't seen, like, a whole lot of overlap pretty much this is a Courtney Love album cover Ugh. oi I don't like it nope send him to the dungeon sorry, sorry, but I gotta stick your life. Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino for me. Super elegant presentation, and the hotel structure is just so perfect for a concept album. It's simple, and I love how much the Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino uh, music video, they made a real model of it. Yeah, I mean, it's super minimal. You know, it looks like one of those things that you buy and you put together with, like, pieces of wood or whatever on top of a little machine. Even though I'm not a huge fan of Arctic Monkeys, I actually think they have some really solid album covers. I also really like the cover of AM, as minimalistic as it is. I also think that's... Uh, like, also really iconic and matches the uh, the feeling and sound, even though I hate that fucking album. Yeah, I, I feel like Arctic Monkeys have some pretty good album covers. G'day by Radiohead. The serene, synthetic mountains over the oily, pitch-black, glitching floor. It's simply a flawless example of a great album cover. Holy shit, this album cover is freaking amazing. I love this one. I'm not super confident about giving 10s out this uh, this video, but I feel like today is a 10 for me. It's the bleak look of the mountains, the, the dark atmosphere in the sky. I feel like even the font choice is perfect. Everything about this is perfect to me, dude. It's glitchy. It's just so representative of the entire album as a whole. Yeah, I, I honestly think that this is one of the most uh, vivid reflections of an album sound, period. Timeless, amazing. Yeah, and exactly, and I have it as uh, my YouTube channel uh, banner, too. I love it that much, so, yep. Somebody, people, I never thought. David Bowie, The Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars. I'm sorry for the basic choice, but it's perfect. The, er the early 70s personified in the album cover that, despite obviously being dated, still looks good. It also fits the music with the dark, uh, the darkness of the street Bowie's working on with a great song like Rock and Roll Suicide. Also proclaimed the arrival of Kanye with the K-West sign on the cover, but uh, you aren't ready for the rest of that information. Oh, god damn it. Looks like a shitty NES cartridge, uh, you know, from back in the day. That being said, so an amazing album cover. I think it's extremely iconic. And this is another instance where I think that the uh, classic status of an album also contributes to not only, first of all, looking pretty on release, uh, with the dark streets, the colors, the yellow, the blue, the black, the, the cars, everything about this is just gorgeous. But I feel like there's also something that's very vintage about this coming back to it nowadays. And I'd probably uh, be okay with giving this one also a 10. The, the artwork is just absolutely freaking gorgeous. And of course, Kanye West. Kanye West! <laughs> Orbitals, Insides, I mean, it helps that it's one of my favorite albums of all time, uh, but the cover is just so wild, visually dense, and colorful, and has so much going on without anything looking out of place. What's up, Wonky Angle, by the way? 
The GOAT! My earlier dono sent no message. Please look at the art for Sulk of Associates. I could write a whole essay about why it's great. Take my soul. What's up, Witch Flowers? Unfortunately, that's not how it works. You're not able to pay your way into this. Even though you've been waiting patiently. And said, hey, please do my pick beforehand. And you've been an extremely active member of the community. Okay. Whatever. If this thing sucks, then I'm sending you to the Shadow Realms. Which flower? How about you soak on these nuts? I'm giving you a. I'm sending you back to the dungeon. Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. Look at this. Four thousand by four thousand, but I can't actually click on it. That's terrible. Anyways, looks like uh, looks like there's a guy with a boner under the towel. They, they look like they're you know posing for some bullshit. The colors are nice, but overall, taking your motherfucking soul. Get that. Give me that soul, okay? Anyways, orbitals insides. We we were in we were doing something. Honestly, very pretty for an electronic album. I, it makes me think very colorful. Yeah, this 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 intrigues me. It makes me want to listen to the project. Really good. Wonky Angle once again coming through with fantastic suggestion here. Wow, so many things to look at. Reminds you of early Red Hot Chili Peppers albums. Take his soul. Take his mother. Man, get the hell out of here with that bullshit. Stop, stop. Wish You Were Here by Pink Floyd. The cover perfectly fits the main theme of the album, which is a higher-up music executives taking advantage of artists. Yep. Iconic. I think the white lines are a bit excessive, but they also kind of work for the framing of this project. Exactly. If it's a person burning, then it's a motherfucking classic out. By the time I get to Phoenix by Injury Reserve, the album cover uh, to By the Time I Get to Phoenix presents the sound of the album in such a strange manner. It makes perfect sense once you actually listen to the record in full. It's so difficult to, for difficult to form words about this album. Yeah, clearly. But I find the album uh, artwork to describe it so well. It looks dystopian and depressing. But just like the music, it's hard to explain why it, uh, why it actually is. I really like how the artwork and the music both mu mutually complement each other. So yeah, this is one that I feel like is amazing, but once you hear the, the actual music it makes a lot more sense. But yeah, no, it's, it's shadowy, it's hard to describe. You can see the lights in the background of like a city. But yeah, once you actually hear the music, I feel like it makes a lot more sense. I love this album art. I think it's beautiful. I think it's gorgeous and, and super reflective of the music. Anyways, to give context, this is an uh, an album by Injury Reserve, and one of the main members ended up passing away during the pandemic uh, before this project came out. And I imagine top picks for you is them talking about how uh, they're still basically alive by the fact that they the algorithm is still basically pushing out the music, um, saying that the train is still on schedule. It's it's one of the most crushing and beautiful moments of the entire project. And I feel like once you actually know the context a little bit better of this project, it, it just puts all the pieces together and it's more, you know, it just feels like it's more understandable in that way. Anyways, one of my favorite album covers, uh, one of the albums that I feel like with every additional listen just really hits me harder and harder. Love it, love it, love it, love it. All right. Somebody said, you know, Miracle Musical. A White Part 2 is actually a good album cover. Uh, it sucks. It's actually one of the worst album covers. It is actually so terrible that that I'm sh I'm surprised anybody's actually like like you must be misremembering this shit, dude. This is graphic design is my passion, the album cover. It is so dog shit. You got the frame here, the terrible Hawaii Part 2 uh color scheme like things here, the moon, and then you got this just absolutely fake ass looking fish figure in the background which makes no sense with the rest of it or with the album at all you got these fake shitty looking jagged stairs another uh photoshop included uh shark here the the trees that also look extremely fake this album covers horse shit which matches actually the sound of this album which i'll happily play for you dude she was in the forest looking to see the trees but no <laughs> I can't. <laughs> oh, yeah, and then it turns out the guy was also a horrible human being on top of it. Ah, look at all the lovely people. 
The Beatles, Revolver. The Beatles definitely have more iconic covers with Sgt. Pepper and Abbey Road, but Revolver is by far my favorite cover of theirs. It really pushed the concept of album artwork and popular music, as before this, most album covers simply featured a picture of the band or artist on the cover, and that was it. I love the stylized artwork of their faces and the sea of random images that seem to flow out of their heads that perfectly complements the experimental and psychedelic sound they developed with this album. I can't look at the cover without hearing uh, the hypnotic droning of Tomorrow Never Knows in my head. Whatever beetle this is, okay, this guy's plotting some shit, okay? And I recognize that beetle, that's, that's the Paul McCartney beetle, and then that's the uh, Janet Jackson beetle, and that's, I don't know which beetle that is. But anyways, yeah, so I, I like the, the images kind of coming out here. This is a beautiful piece of art. Yeah, this is a really good one. This is a good, this is a good cover. In the court of the Crimson King by King Crimson perfectly encapsulates the feeling of the first track. It's claustrophobic feeling of the face screaming out towards you really does capture the frightening nature of the Vietnam War at the time. Yeah, I don't really know about this one. I'm not really in love with this cover. Um, I don't think that this is... Uh, you know, maybe this was okay in the 60s, but I, I don't know. I, I don't think this one's aged all that well. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, this is uh, extremely iconic. Love this. Uh, it's, it looks like street art in a way. Super, you know, everything's, the expression on this face is just obscure. It's just pushed to the limit. Yeah. It does, it does actually match pretty well with the sound, too. I don't know if I could play it because of copyright. I feel like the stream's going to get taken down, but still, yeah, really, really good example. Uh, but yeah, no, I like I like the original a little bit better though. The last stage of Everywhere at the End of Time by the Caretaker. It's a beautiful artwork uh, that shows what appears to be a simple backboard. The symbolism of stage six of Alzheimer's disease. The board is supposed to contain information, but this information is far from being crossed, and it perfectly shows the state of mind of stage six. Thank you, Ivan Seal, for this work of art. I do agree that in terms of the album art, this one seems to be uh, certainly a standout, especially since the one beforehand is so obscure and haunting to have something just so simple as a board with some tape over it uh, and what looks like a sort of backrooms-esque area is honestly terrifying. And I really think that it's, it perfectly captures the, the ending here being so empty and desolate. Um, yeah, I, I liked all the covers for this project. Like, honestly, I thought all six were really amazing. But I do feel like this is a really interesting piece to sort of end on being very conclusive. Uh, and in a way, just looking at it brings back a lot of fear. Um, the fact that the shadow, too, behind the board is so dark, showing there's, like, only one source of light in the entire room, in a way, feeling even more, uh, like, like uncomfortable and, um, what, what's the word? Uncanny? Yeah, this is, a, this is an amazing piece. So this was stage four's art, right? This is where it starts to get really fucked up. Just for everywhere at the end of time, right? And then stage five was honestly listening to it and seeing stage five is disgusting. This is such a horrifying piece. I mean, you see them all here, like the way it starts, like stage five is where I just was like, the horror sunk in, but I feel like it's stage six is like some sort of acceptance of what's going on too. Death Consciousness has always been my favorite, very clean and ominous. Granted, it was just a painting. Uh, it's a beautiful one that almost perfectly captures how the album sounds into an image. You know what? It's actually true. As much as like this is just uh, uh, someone else's art, someone else's painting, it does feel like it actually so perfectly fits the album itself that it takes it and makes it its own. And I actually see the, uh, the artwork as being its own thing on the album um, because it just feels so iconic to it. I feel like the crop two of this is perfect, like exactly where it stops, what it shows, feels like, even though it is someone else's painting, just the, the, the actual picture, the portion taken, where it's not even their head is showing, it's just them kind of slumped, you see more uh, in focus what they were actually writing. Um, and I feel like it's super reflective of the sound of this album, which is just uh, despondent and terrifying. No, we're not looking at a fucking piss grave album cover. I'm not fucking falling for that. Jesus Christ. I will never forget. That's all I'll say. I will never fucking forget. Ooh, hoo, hoo. there's an underrated one. It's only got four upvotes because it's not even that. It's a super obscure pick, but black one by Sun Oo. 
Uh, you can get lost in this one. Literally, the incredible detail in this dark piece is just as captivating as it is terrifying. It feels like being lost in a haunted forest. A perfect match for one of the bleakest, darkest, and most horrifying drone metal albums of all time. Yeah, this one is the definition of bleak. I feel like it doesn't get more bleak than this album cover, and it's super reflective of the music. Look at this shit, dude. You can barely even, like, figure out what's going on here. But this has actually inspired some of my own art. Like, just the, the trees here, the way that there's, like, little uh, stubs sticking out of them, the fact that it all is just in black and white, so it all just kind of fades into a, a singular experience. Yeah, this is an amazing album cover. It's it's so mysterious. It matches the sound of this, just sounding so fucked up, dark, and, and, and odd. Like, it, it just doesn't seem to follow some sort of traditional structure. Like, it just sort of... Uh, lingers in, in the haunted forest in a way no i've not drawn anything in forever i've not made art in years when i heard this album i was like oh, those trees look like something and then it came back up when i was drawing trees oh yeah i did skip a few years thoughts and loops by stereo lab not only uh does it perfectly match the aesthetic of the album but the unique palette of green and blue <laughs> this this is what you made me go back for Stuff. This garbage, dude. This album cover is garbage, man. This is terrible. It looks like a, a mutant menorah. The color, yeah, the colors are terrible. It's puke green. It's got a bunch of, like, the most distracting thing about it is whatever the fuck this label bullshit is here, dude. It's, it's simply just a little figure. If, I, if I, I'm going to listen to a song off this album, and if it doesn't change my mind, then I'm sending you to Shadow Realms, man. God damn it. You know what? Hey, don't judge a book by its cover. I always say that. I say don't judge a book by its cover, okay? You know me. I never jump to conclusions, okay? So your soul is safe. I think it actually fits the sound of this album perfectly exactly like you said. It's minimal, uh, minimalistic. The ball shaped figure actually does seem to be very reflective of this. And after actually listening to the music, it does actually seem to make sense. Floral Shop, Macintosh Plus, it's the Vaporwave album. That's all you gotta know. It's the Vaporwave album. The person behind this project is a VTuber now. De Demon Dice has some competition. Shit is horrible. I mean, it's one of those that's definitely iconic for sure, but I don't think iconic always equals good. This looks terrible. No, I think the pink is the least of the problems here. I think the pink and green is a cool combination, but just the statue looks so horribly cropped in. It just looks terrible, but also kind of reflects the album. It feels like just cropping a bunch of random shit together to make an album cover in the same way that's like cropping a bunch of random shit together to make an album. I have too much history with this album to judge it fairly. So, I'm going to skip it. I, I, can't, be, I can't be fair with this one. Velocity Design Comfort by Sweet Trip. This is an album that embodies the phrase, sounds just like the album cover. I've made a mention of this when someone sent in a song, and I completely agree. It's such a crazy and unique design that really takes the IDM and electronic sound that Sweet Trip was going with and does a great job visualizing, instantly jumping out at you and making you want to listen to the album. This is a, this is a really good one. Yeah, this is amazing. The, the figure here feels like it matches the abstraction. The rainbows represent the colors and the spectrum that kind of show up throughout the album, as well as I feel like the clouds heavily represent the, the, the sort of real life uh, feeling to the sound that keeps it feel rooted in nature to make these other parts more extreme and exciting. Yeah, I think this is an amazing, amazing album cover. Super iconic, um, beautiful, and better the more I look at it. Animal Collective's Song Tongs. Not only is it a memorable album cover, but I think it displays a sense of childhood wonder and freedom, which makes it perfectly fit with the songs. What the fuck? I've never seen this up close. Jesus. Ew. That's terrible. But I kind of love it. I, I gotta say, it's creepy, it's unsettling. I haven't actually heard this album, so I'm curious to listen to it and see if it is reflective. I 
something that's really reflective, actually. It, it's unsettling, but still there's something pretty about it. Like, this this whole thing feels very uncanny, especially with the, the normal human hair, right? But with the obscure, like, paper paper mache sort of figures here, the skeletons and everything. There's something about this music that's very pretty, but has an undertone that does feel a little bit creepy. It actually feels extremely reflective. Um, yeah, wow. Uh, uh, I really like that. See, after hearing the music, I'm like, yeah, it looks odd, but it does feel extremely appropriate. Good example. Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness by the Smashing Pumpkins uh, artwork is so unique and dreamlike, and I absolutely love it. The art is some, it somehow fits every song on the album, and I can't even explain how. This just screams pure ambition and definitely stuck in my brain the first time I ever saw it, uh, which is one of the only few requirements I personally have to define a cover that is good. Yeah, I mean, if it leaves a, an impression, then that is that is good. Yeah, I really like this one. I mean, even just the fact that it's called Melancholy is, like, weird, but yeah, it's it's, oh, it's so weird, it's disturbing. Like, the, the star, the face they're making, they seem like they're under some sort of spell or distress or whatever. It's it's odd. It's so... Oh, but it's also iconic. It looks like she's coming out of the Limp Biscuit starfish. Please never make a mention of that again. I would... Uh, see, I, I almost forgot that that existed. And then you had to bring it up again at the worst time. That's right. That, that does exist, doesn't it? Huh. The Stussy. Wow. Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> well, you ruined it. Next! <laughs> Lincoln Park Hybrid Theory. When asked about it, Chester said uh, that the soldier with dragonfly wings represents the band blending hard and soft musical elements. The soldier represents the roughness and the wings represent frailness. Stencil graffiti style also. Wow, that actually sounds cool. Mm, uh, one thing. I don't know why. It doesn't even matter how hard you try. It reminds me of swans, you know, because cause the music, you know, it, it it's all rough and dangerous. But then it's got fairy wings because it's swans and it's light, it, it's light and pretty, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but I'm a soldier. Boom, 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 I'm a soldier. I don't like this one. I don't like this album cover. I think it's ugly. I, I think the red looks gross. It looks like... Uh, the spray paint's kind of ugly. The the letters are all over the place and don't really work for me. I don't like the font of anything here. Um, I think it's garbage. Garbage. <laughs> Justice with cross, simple yet instantly striking. A great example of doing uh, so much with a little. Genuinely iconic. I agree. This is an amazing album cover. It's taking a symbolism of just, you know, straight up a, a cross and completely owning the shit out of it and taking it and making it your own. I mean, this is an extremely iconic album cover. It's very, like, instantaneously recognizable. And the fact that it is so simple, I feel like they really owned it and just freaking went with it. And yeah, now when I see this shit, I think justice. Simple as that. So, really good. Great example. Also feels like it reflects the music very well, which I guess now is the part where I play some music from it. Ex Military by Death Grips is a great one. The image of a man on the cover is actually a picture of an aboriginal man taken out from a magazine that Zach Hill would carry around. The folded lines around the cover really fit uh, with such an abrasive album. It also fits the whole vibe of the album uh, with running away from civilization and living off your own primal instincts in rage. Oh God, ex-military. Anyways, amazing album cover. Love this, love this, love this. Feels so appropriate. Uh, extremely iconic. I agree, the folds work extremely well. Ex-military is amazing. Yep. Now, I'm gonna throw in another one here because I don't, I don't think it's gonna show up. Um, I'm going to do Glow Part 2. I love the Glow Part 2, one of my favorite albums of all time. So I feel like let's just close it off on that. I, I love this one. The Elephant, extremely iconic, really taking this image and sort of making it its own. Uh, the font's beautiful, really matches it. I, I love that it's kind of uh, stoking a fire. The whole thing feels very uh, children's booky, with just sort of uh, cute drawings of uh, not a kid's book. Whatever, fuck you. All right, that's going to be it. We, we, we have two hours of footage, so I think that's more than enough. Um, I love you guys so much. Thanks everyone for watching. We will do another one of these. Uh, we'll continue the saga at some point. But yeah, that's all I got right now for uh, Best Album Covers. Thanks everyone for watching. See you later. I pledge allegiance.